Hello guys, in this video tutorial, we'll look at how to use various utilities in order to find out more about the DNS records of a particular domain. So what we look at in this uh, video is the dig utility. So what exactly is dig? You know, dig allows us to make various queries to the DNS servers about the domain which they host. So let's say you want to find out the IP address of google.com. Now a typical example is, let's say, you know, you have typed yahoo.com or google.com on your web browser and put an enter, right? After that, let's say locally, if you do not have the IP address of google.com in your cache, then your computer will go ahead and make a query to the DNS server, which has been configured on it, right? So, and then go ahead, find the IP address of google.com and then go ahead and allow the browser to connect to that IP address. So the same thing we can achieve manually by using the dig command. So using dig, we can query the DNS server to tell us more about a particular domain name. So let's start off. Let's first go ahead and find out the IP address of google.com and we use the dig google.com command. I can see that after that we actually see that, you know, we've got an answer and then question of course once again was what was google.com and in the answer we have these three different IP addresses which have been given, right? So all these three correspond to google.com. This is of course, you know, well expected because google.com basically hosts these thousands of big server farms which all contain different IP addresses. Also the point here to notice is the authority section in which we have the domain name servers for google.com. So the way in which, you know, the DNS servers are actually hierarchically organized, hierarchically organized is that google.com will have its own DNS servers which will go ahead and communicate with the other DNS servers. Now, in order to find out more details about some of the subdomains of google.com, we can go ahead and query these DNS servers directly. So, how can we do that, right? So, before that, in the additional section, what we see is the same DNS servers which have been mentioned here, the IP addresses of those, right? NS1, NS2, NS3, and NS4. And then you can go ahead and find the IP addresses of these servers, right? So when we actually put in dig google.com, what happened was we went ahead and queried our local DNS server, right? So we can go ahead and force the dig program to go ahead and make the DNS request from a particular DNS server. So how is that done? So as we can see in the authority section, we now know the DNS servers of google.com, right? So let's say we query ns4.google.com for information about Google. So the way to do that is you prefix the add sign, give the DNS server and then give it the query, right? So once again, we've gotten a reply. Of course, the reply looks identical. But the point to note here is that now the reply comes from the ns4.google.com DNS server of Google, right? So now we are not relying upon our local DNS server to go ahead and give us the IP address, but we are querying Google server itself. So now the question comes that how do you find out the domain name servers of various domains? So the way to do that is you use the dig command and you give the ns command and go ahead and run it. So let's say we call it for google.com once again. So now you'll notice, you know, the question which we asked is for google.com, tell us the name servers or the ns servers, right? ns stands for name server. And in the answer section, we can find out the name servers for google.com, right? Similarly, you can try it out for any domain, right? You can go ahead, try it out for Yahoo. And you will notice that Yahoo has a bunch of, you know, more name servers than Google does. So Yahoo has around seven name servers, right? So using the dig command, we were able to find out till now the IP address of various fully qualified domain names such as google.com, yahoo.com, as well as the domain name servers itself, which are hosted by these companies, right? Now let's say we want to find out the mail server address. Now this is very important because whenever somebody is sending out mail, may it be a legitimate client or a spammer, then he needs to know the mail exchanger's address. The way to do that is you use the dig command 
and give it the MX or the mail exchanger request and point it to the appropriate domain whose mail servers you want to find out. So let's say google.com, right? Now if you notice, the question we've asked is tell me the mail exchangers for google.com and the answer we get is that these are the mail exchangers for google.com. So right, smtp4.google.com. In a later video, we'll show how to go ahead and connect to this SMTP server itself. Right, so these are the mail servers of google.com. Similarly, we can run a query for let's say yahoo.com as well. Right, and you'll find that now we know the yahoo.com's mail server. Now this is the name can go ahead and find out the IP address through the additional section about what exactly A, B, C and all these you know correspond to. So uh, you know till now what we've seen is how to go ahead find out the IP address given a fully qualified domain name and you know then after that how to find out the DNS servers of that domain and then how to go ahead and find out the mail exchanger. Right now, so now what would be interesting is if we can go ahead and query the DNS server and tell it to give us all the DNS entries which it has in it. So that is something called a domain transfer, right? So the way we can do that is let's say first we go ahead and find, you know, diggoogle.com and we find one of these name servers and then we go ahead and request that name server to tell us everything about google.com. So what should happen ideally is that the whole you know zone transfer should occur for google.com and whatever ns2.google.com holds as the DNS entries for the whole google.com zone should be sent to us. So let's try it out. But now what you see is that the transfer has failed and the reason is most DNS servers basically as a security feature turn off zone transfers. So it might not be possible always to have a zone transfer done. So Google has it disabled but some places might have it enabled. So as an example maybe you can try out an educational institution because most of them would have it enabled. And let's say we go ahead and find out iitg.rnet.in right. So we can first find out the name servers which are here. And we go ahead and see that Lewitt is one of the name servers. So we go ahead and make a request to Lewitt. Right? So iitg.rnet.in. So this is the educational institution where I studied. So one of the premier educational institutes in India. And I was lucky enough to be there. So let's go ahead and make a query to lewitt.iitg.rnet and tell it to do the whole zone transfer of the iitg domain by using this command, right? So a whole zone transfer request is being initiated and now if you look at it, we've actually got a reply and this is the whole zone, right? iitgearnet.in and then you have these servers which are there here, you know, and what is exactly these servers IP addresses, so on and so forth. So whatever DNS records Lewitt.iitg.rnet had about this domain has been now sent to us, right? So you can see a whole lot of servers, whatever is there, right? And most of these are actually, you know, been named as shiloi.iitg.rnet.in, webmail.iitg, so on and so forth. So, right, the whole zone, DNS zone has been transferred using the AXFR command. It's an interesting command, but not most people have it enabled. So, once again, trying to go ahead and you know synopsize the whole video tutorial is that using commands like dig or ns lookup you know there's another command ns lookup which almost does the same thing you can check it up but most people use dig now we can find out more about the dns records of a particular domain this is very useful because let's say as a vulnerability assessment expert somebody says you know i have this domain xyz.com go ahead and do a vulnerability assessment, a black box vulnerability assessment from somewhere on the internet. 
so all you have this is this fully qualified domain name so where do you start you know how do you find out what is the ip address what are the domain name servers what is the mail servers address you know so on and so forth you know and maybe if a zone transfer is allowed you could find out even all the other servers which are hosted on the same network and this gives you a staging point for more vulnerability assessment exercises as to which servers you need to go ahead and test well that's it for this session thank you